as a young scholar, uh, when I wrote my uh, dissertation, I I read a lot of uh, works by uh, Professor Koichi Shinohara. Uh, I'm I'm profoundly uh, in depth to uh, Professor Shinohara's uh, research. As an eminent scholar, Professor Shinohara taught in Canada and America. Uh, at many uh, uh, preeminent um, institutions, uh, he uh, focused on his teaching and research without interacting much with the uh, mundane world. He worked with Buddhist learning and the two worlds, uh, with dedications and aspirations. And uh, Professor Shinohara also enjoyed the companionship of another great scholar and his wife. And his legacy of Buddhist studies is mighty and it continues among many of his disciples. Happy birthday, Professor Shinohara. I hope you are healthy and happy um, in your retirement. Uh, thank you. Happy birthday, Koichi. I am so grateful to be your student. You are a brilliant scholar, such a skillful teacher, and really a wonderful human being. Thank you for all that you have done for me and for the community of graduate students that you and Phyllis fostered. Congratulations on all of your accomplishments. I'm really looking forward to more celebrations. Happy birthday. Congratulations, Koichi. It seems like only yesterday we were celebrating at UBC your 65th birthday and now here we are. As I wrote my PhD and my own articles, I found your work more and more useful and so do my students today. So, no, I was never your PhD, PhD student, but I've been learning from you for nearly 30 years now, and so have my students. I really appreciate the gift of scholarship that you've given us all and the many insights that we now have into medieval Chinese Buddhism, thanks to your patient and painstaking work with the primary sources. So, thank you, and happy birthday from me and from all of us at Mac. Hi, Koichi. Happy birthday. I wish I could be in New Haven and celebrate your 80th birthday with you, Phyllis, Mark, and Tarki, and all other great friends. Thank you, Koichi, for being such an amazing supervisor to me. I didn't fully grasp it until I became a supervisor of graduate students myself. You trained me how to think, argue, and write with your uniquely insightful and considerate style. I want to end it with these two pictures of us together in the 2011 year convocation ceremony. I just can't love enough the happy and beautiful smiles of you and Phyllis. I hope that um, later we may get a chance to uh, have a virtual separated drink and chat together, maybe via Zoom. Just Phyllis, you and me together like old days. I can't wait to see you two again even on Zoom. I just can't wait to catch up with you guys. Happy 80th birthday, Koichi. I love you so, so, so much. Phyllis and Koichi, first, a hearty congratulations to you both. There is so much to celebrate about your lives and careers. The first time we met was in Hamilton at McMaster University, and you treated me like a friend from the start and with far more kindness than I deserved. After you moved to Yale, I fondly, re fondly recall many evenings at your house, eating excellent food, playing ball with your dogs in the living room, and listening to music and talking and talking and talking, and perhaps a little bit of drinking. And I, it was always so hard to make the decision to finally leave and go home. I wish I had more pictures of those gatherings, but I was always having such a good time, I never paused to take any. But somehow this one that I took sticks with me as capturing the spirit of one of those late evenings. I always came away from those events so energized and with a mind ablaze with ideas and things to pursue. You modeled what it means to be a friend and a colleague and how to be the most gracious of hosts. Thanks for all your support and inspiration over the years. Let me end by saying that doing this as a video somehow just doesn't seem right. You've always demonstrated the magic that happens when people are brought together to interact, share ideas, and establish lifelong friendships. And for that, I will be forever thankful to you both. Congratulations again. 
I would like to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Koichi Shinohara for his many, many years of service to the field, specifically uh, the fields of Buddhist studies, obviously Asian history, and for the many contributions that he has made in terms of his, his publications, both books and research articles, and of course most significantly for his stewardship for so many graduate students and uh, also students from far afield. Thank you very much and congratulations on this commemoration. Hi, Koichi. Happy birthday. Jackie Stone here. I'm deeply grateful to have had you and Phyllis as my colleagues. Like so many of us working on East Asian Buddhism, I've benefited immensely from your far-reaching scholarship. Among the very best memories of my academic career are attending conferences that you and Phyllis organized. I especially remember a joint one at University of Toronto, McMaster on the moment of death in cross-cultural comparison, and another uh, exciting one at Yale on sin in uh, Asian religions. Those events set a standard, not only for stimulating intellectual exchange, but also for collegiality. Uh, they were memorable for the way that you involved graduate students and younger scholars together with older established folk. They exemplified for me what the scholarly life should be. And all those many volumes that you and Phyllis put together after the conferences were over represent nothing short of a true bodhisattva achievement. So with all my heart, I wish you many, many more birthdays in good health and happiness. Hi. While I'm not a scholar of Buddhism, I can see something in Koichi's work, which is all about balance. Someone who's operating from a sense of self-knowledge and best erudition, and someone who can therefore be completely gentle. Um, yet probing in everything he takes on. But what I want to say about Koichi is that my feelings for him go far beyond respect and profound admiration for his scholarship. Um, I love Koichi. So for me to write a very small essay in honor of Koichi um, signifies my immense love for him as well as my profound gratitude that he exists in my world. It is my honor and great pleasure to join in celebrating Koichi's remarkable scholarly career. His contributions to the field are invariably marked by his formidable intellect, his seriousness of purpose, his range of expertise, and so on. And this is all the more remarkable given how he came to this. Many may be unaware that his graduate training was in sociology of religion and that he basically trained himself to be a scholar of Chinese Buddhism after getting his position at McMaster. But I'll leave it to others to laud his academic accomplishments. I'd like instead to use this opportunity to say something about the personal debt that I owe to him. Koichi, along with his wife Phyllis, hired me out of graduate school when I was still ABD and embarrassingly naive and clueless. And they mentored and nurtured me at McMaster for six wonderful years. During that time, we taught together, we ran conferences and advised graduate students together, we read together, and we just hung out a lot. Koichi quickly became my model for how to survive this business. He demonstrated in his very humble way that it is possible to be deeply committed to scholarly excellence and yet remain lighthearted and not take oneself too seriously. He has remained an inspiration to me throughout my career and for that, I'd like to thank Koichi from the bottom of my heart. Congratulations, Koichi. <laughs> I've known both of them since I was 20 years old. Uh, and I didn't finish my PhD till I was almost 30. So um, they've basically been surrogate parents to me for my most of my, my adult life. And there's a lot of ways that they I could talk forever about how they influenced me intellectually. But when I think back to the time we spent together, mostly I'm just really grateful for all the fun we had. Um, dog sitting, um, all of the post talk, 
meals and drinks and, and conferences that we did. Um, so I just really miss spending time with you guys and um, I'm just really thankful for the time that we got to spend together. Um, and I miss you all and I um, look forward to spending more time with you, with Benny, in the future. Congratulations! Now, I feel honored and lucky to be among the people who have known and learned from Phyllis and Koichi. I feel a lot of love and gratitude for both of them and I really treat them or think of them as part of my extended family. I think as the students on Phyllis and Koichi, we have been incredibly lucky to have had them. Uh, we have also had an opportunity to see and observe the excellence, the excellence that Phyllis and Koichi exhibit in anything they do. Um, and I really hope that uh, we will continue to stay in touch through all this COVID craziness. Uh, and I also hope that um, Phyllis and Koichi will be able to feel the warmth um, the gratitude and the love that all of us are sending their way today and that that will make their uh, day, week and hopefully year uh, a little better. Thank you so much. Hi Koichi, this is Rini. Uh, happy birthday for your 80th birthday. Um, I am sending this video to express my gratitude for your ongoing support and help. Uh, it has been already 10 years that I uh, that I met you in person. When I came back to Yale as an assistant professor, um, you and Phyllis became really good and sweet mentor for me. But honestly, I was a little nervous to teach at Yale University as a young scholar, but, but because you and Phyllis uh, my life at Yale became much easier and I feel honored that you're still my good friend and mentor and senior colleague and <laughs> I hope that uh, all the videos and the uh, photos we are preparing for you and your conference will make you happy so I am very looking forward to the conference so see you soon at the conference. Bye-bye. Hello, Dr. Shinohara. It is Sue here in the Canadian Maritimes. And uh, rarely a day goes by that I do not reflect on the ways my life is better because of the connection I have with you. You have taught me what great teaching is about. And a good part of that is generosity and your generosity is unmatched. More than anything, you taught me what it is to be a good human. And if I have taken anything away from my time with you, it is likely a very clear picture of the kind of person I want to be. You are patient. And you have a, a beautiful sense of humor, but you are profoundly loving. And it is a source of strength for me. And it is a gift for which I'm very grateful. Thank you for, for being so patient as to try to teach me. Thank you for showing what, what good teaching is about. And most importantly, thank you for showing me what it is to be a person of integrity, right? of care, of love. That is the, um, that's the gift I carry with me. Hello, coach. I still remember distinctly that quite a few times after I presented paper in conferences, you would put him aside and say to the effect that it was a great paper, but there's more to it. That was set me thinking hard and looking for what was that more you mentioned. It is this spirit of deep mining that you have exemplified in your brilliant career and that has inspired many of us, myself included. We feel at once encouraged and always mindful that there is more. Harvard and Yale renew their annual tug of war through the infamous annual football game. But you and I renew our friendship and your mentorship in my periodical trips to New Haven, 
to participate in the workshops and conferences you and Phyllis organize. In retrospect, nearly all my trips to New Haven, there were many of them, but took place simply because you frequently beckoned. Now that you are retired, I have a sinking feeling that the next trip to New Haven will probably just to join the mass hysteria of the annual Harvard Yale football game, if it's Yale's turn to host it. But sadly, I'm not even a football fan. I'm sure I'll figure out some other excuse to visit you to renew our friendship. In Japan, the singer Kiyomoto Shizua Tayo and the actors Nakamura Utamemon and Nakamura Kazaburo, um, the three of them have been designated living national treasures in Japan. If we have our ways, we will annoy you, one of the living treasures of New England or the field of Miyako China. Congratulations on a brilliant career. Happy birthday, Koichi, and many more. Happy birthday, Koichi. Happy birthday, Dr. Shinohara. Thank you all for going out of your way to join this special event in, in honor of Koichi. I understand that Koichi has played an important role in your careers or in your life, perhaps as, as friends, as colleagues, as a mentor, or all of the above. But for me, Koichi means even more. For me, he is no less than another father. He not only fosters me as a scholar, but also exercises significant impact on several key aspects of my personal life. I confess that I'm still at a very basic boomy or level as a scholar, but without Koichi, I could not even have become a string enter, Yu Liu in Chinese or a slot of apanas in Sanskrit. Someone like Koichi is well. I have never known another teacher who is as erudite and humble as Koichi. He cares so much about his students, but is wise and brave enough to keep full brain to their creativity, imagination, and even they dream. And he never failed to show up. Like the Bodhisattva Guan Yin, when he, he feels that his students may go astray. Over the past three decades since I had the fortune of becoming his student, I have come to be amazed at numbers of coincidences that are so staggering that for me they must be proofs of my comic types with Koichi. Let me here only mention three of such coincidences. First, while Koichi is one year older than my father, he is one day younger than me in terms of days and months. Second, I was once appointed a full-time associate professor at Koichi's amateur major, Tokyo University, or Todai. 
on which his father was named still a emeritus professor. A fact that Koichi, out of his characteristic humbleness, didn't tell me, but which I came to know only accidentally from another source after I had been at Todai for quite a few months. Another marvelous coincidence occurs just today when Koichi is now 2080. I have just turned 55 yesterday, and the numbers of age gap between us 25. Happen to be the multiplications of five by five. Hence, this interesting arithmetic: eighty minus fifty-five is equal to twenty-five. Is equal five times five. Perhaps no one but the Buddha is able to figure out the implications of all these coincidences. But for now, I can only express my. Boundless gratitude and love to Koichi with this banner of wish. Happy birthday, Koichi! Well, in addition to this conventional wish, I do get several birthday gifts to present. They are number one, a Chinese version of his masterpieces, spells, images, and mandala. Number two. A collection of his self-chosen articles, and number three, a tiny version of these collections. Hello, Koichi. The Valiers are all together in Lakeside, Michigan, and we have something to say to you. Happy 80th birthday, Koichi!